I'm Ben Engel. We're tying the uh, Looks Better Wet bait fish, shortened to the LB dub. Uh, let's get into it. So, I'm going to be starting off with a Gamagatsu uh, big old three aught hook. Um, not super important which number, uh, but you just want to make sure that it's got a really nice big gap on it. Uh, these striped bass. You really want to make sure that you've got a nice big section of hook to hold onto their mouths. They're going to be thrashing around. So big old three-aught hook, but this thing can be tied down to about a two uh, just by shrinking down the fibers. So we're going to get that hook in that vise. Um, super critical that you get that hook perfectly parallel with the, uh, the plane of your vise. That is what's going to give you a nice stable tying base. So. Go to my thread. I'm using a 6 aught Vibus thread. Nice and strong, but a circular thread, so it's going to give you a lot of uh, binding tension when you start to um, get into your bucktail, which is actually going to be a bulk of this fly. So, what's funny is with most striper flies, we're seeing people tying these big, uh, big weighted clouser style flies. You're looking for that big jigging motion. Um, I've kind of developed this fly based around Lefty's Deceiver uh, and mixing in a couple newer techniques um, with the concept of making something that I can fish in shallower water uh, so I get a nice sustained fall. So this one's going to be great for any places like Richardson Bay uh, or the Delta, but don't be afraid. I mean, throw it out at Ocean Beach, throw it in the surf. It's going to get a lot of motion. So I'm going to take that big hunk of flashaboo. This is just a pearl flashaboo in the micro. Um, doesn't really matter. You can do any kind of flash through the thing. Just make sure you have a nice flash core. It's just going to give you a lot of strength and a lot of, obviously, flash. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie that in about two hook shanks worth off the back of this fly. Uh, and you'll notice that I have a pretty solid chunk. Um, that's something that I've adapted actually from Steve Adachi. Uh, shout out to Steve Adachi in the shop. He uh, ties his clouser with a giant, giant pearl core. Um, I thought it was too much to be completely honest the first time I saw it. And uh, anybody that knows his flies or has fished his flies will tell you that one, there's no competition to them. And two, from that, there's Definitely not too much flash in the core. It just helps to bring those fish in. So I've gone ahead and I've also doubled that flash back. So we're gonna have a huge, huge flash core to that thing. Next thing I'm gonna go to is a strung Chinese saddle hackle, uh, five to seven inches in white. Um, again, I'm using white for this one just because I want a white bait fish. But at the end of this, I'll show you a couple different color variations. There are tons of directions you can go with this. So feel free to mess around and have some fun with it. Um, but for this one, going with a straight white saddle hackle. I've gone and I've pre-selected two feathers and prepped them. Uh, what I mean by prepping is that I just took them, stripped off the fine fluff from where I want to uh, go ahead and tie those things in. And now I'm set. So I'm gonna take one of those feathers and I am gonna point that backwards along the shank of the fly. And I'm gonna tie that in. So that's on the near side, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna repeat that process for the far side of the hook or the uh, camera side of the hook. So you'll get to see it a little bit easier on this one. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the natural curve of that feather, so it's gonna curve down like that. So I want it to curve inwards towards the fly and wrap around that flash and be nice and even with that other feather I just tied in. And I'm gonna go ahead and just tie that on back. And now I have a nice bait fish kind of silhouette. That's going to give me a lot of movement in that water um, while still not increasing too much weight. Uh, the other cool thing about this is since it's not going to have those giant lead eyes associated with, uh, with most striper flies and that jigging motion that I was talking about earlier, um, they can be kind of cumbersome to cast. This one tends to be a little bit easier to cast just because it's going to have a little bit less weight to it. Uh, therefore, you're not going to have to work as hard to get it to cut through the wind. So that is pretty much the tail section of this fly. Now to build the body, we're going to go with the, uh, the method of spinning bucktail. Um, bucktail is a great fiber. Uh, it's been around forever. Obviously, it comes off a of deer. So um, we're going to take the large northern bucktail in a bright white. Um, this is going to give us a nice flare, nice strong fiber, but again, not increase weight too much. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from the back of this bucktail, I'm going to just start taking little sections of that white. Um, so what I'll grab is about the diameter of a pencil, uh, and I'll pull that away from that bucktail, and I will trim that down as close to the hide as possible, just so you minimize waste. And then what I'll do is I'm going to take it in my right hand, and I'm going to extend it to about a half an inch just in front of that, uh, that tail that I tied in. This is going to help to initiate, or initiate that um, taper that we want to establish through that fly. So boom, right there, I'm going to go in and pinch. Now I have my tie-in point, but I don't want all of this waste in the front. So I'll pull that away. I'm going to cut with about a quarter of an inch in front of my fingers off camera. And then I'll bring that back. And now I know that if I tie that in at that point, right in front of my fingers, it is the correct length just from that measurement. Starting, I'm going to go in with one loose wrap, two loose wraps, and I'm just going to kind of start working that material around the hook by pinching and rolling while still maintaining nice tension with that bobbin. Uh, since we did those two loose wraps, it allows us to really maneuver those fibers around in the initial uh, stage. And now that I'm solid, now that I can see that that has gone all the way around the shank of that hook, I can go in and finish off the butt sections. Then I'm going to go ahead and advance about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less forward. And we're basically going to just have this section in the fly that looks like the head of a fly. If you really wanted to make something really rigid, you could go in with super glue at this point and hit that, but to, just for means of time, I'm gonna go ahead and skip that step. So, wash, rinse, repeat. We went bucktail. I'm just gonna do the same thing and spin another pencil-sized pull of, uh, of bucktail around that hook. And you'll notice that if we just keep on bringing it about a half an inch in front of that last section, it's going to start to give us a taper very, very, very quickly. Um, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that nice, fishy, swimmy silhouette that gives us a beautiful taper in the water. So I'm going to be about right there, probably. Um, I'm going to go in and just like I did the last time, so I have that, uh, that fiber in my left hand right at that tie-in point. I'm then going to go in and trim those butt ends. And one loose wrap, two loose wraps. And just like the last time, I'm just going to start pinching and twisting that fiber around that hook. You don't need to be super gentle with this. Uh, it will break if you overwork it, but it's pretty hard to get to that point. So really make sure that it's nice and around the hook before you go ahead and I secure those butt ends in to prep for advancing that thread to our, you guessed it, third section of bucktail through that fly. Now, if you're looking at this thing and thinking, what is this guy doing? It looks like a hot mess. Um, that's part of it, believe it or not. That's kind of how we've given this fly its name, uh, the looks better wet, because it will look ridiculous until it gets its first swim in the water, and then you'll be surprised at how beautifully that, uh, that teardrop starts to establish. So again, just measuring out my bucktail, cutting it in front of my left hand, placing, pulling down once, twice with a loose wrap, and then I'm going to spin that all the way around the hook, encouraging those fibers to roll. And now you can start to kind of see that shape that we're getting. And it's looking nice. I'm actually going to fit one more big section of bucktail on this one, uh, just because we can. I'd say between three and four sections is all you need. Once you get to five, you're really just kind of increasing bulk. And I don't think that two is enough. It just seems to be a little sparse. Um, but if you can squeeze in a fourth, by all means do it. It does help to, uh, to build that nice bulky silhouette that we all want. All right, so measure, come in pinch, remove my hand, then I will go into trim. 
right down once, twice, pinch and roll. Make sure those fibers are going all the way around that hook, which they seem to be. So at that point, I can go ahead and finish up and tie in all those butt ends. And now I'm gonna establish a pretty good thread base. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and really make sure those ones are secured in. Uh, and what we're gonna be doing now is adding just synthetic brushes by uh, Enrico Puglisi. So we won't need to really worry about anything showing up. Just worried about making some nice strength through that fly. All right, gill plate. Uh, I really like seeing a little bit of red in any of my bait fish. I think it's, um, might just be for the fishermen to make it look a little bit more fun, but I really do think that hit of red might sug uh, suggest more of an injured bait fish look to the fish. So we're gonna tie in a Enrico Puglisi Anadromous brush. Uh, this one's red, so it's gonna have a really nice blend of synthetic fiber and flash uh, so that you get that nice movement and just a little hint of red. And we'll probably put about three to four wraps depending on the fly in this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie in that wire on my side of the hook. And then you'll see that I'm treating this just like a soft tackle. I'm just forcing those fibers backwards, uh, not really aggressively, just kind of stroking them through my, uh, my fingers so that they lay backwards and flat. This is gonna help to make sure that everything's nice and neat. So I'll go around, like I said, three turns is probably all you need with this thing. Maybe a fourth on the bigger flies. Since this one is a, uh, a big old three-aught hook, I am going to do four. That was three. And then one more for good measure. All right, now we got that nice red section. I'm gonna go ahead and tie that a little bit forward and then I'm gonna stroke everything back and then make sure it's really nice and tied in. Striper are mean to flies, so you wanna take every little bit of precaution you can to make these things last longer. So you'll notice that a lot of the times when I'm tying things in, I'm uh, making sure that there's a lot of, uh, of coverage to make sure that it's not gonna come out on me. All right, so gill plate. Last but not least, we uh, are gonna do the head of this fly. And for that, I'm using another EP brush. And this one is the Foxy brush. This one's about three inches wide. Uh, the thing I like about this for the head is that it does have Arctic Fox in it, which if any of you guys have fished steelhead, know that it's a really nice swimmy fiber in the, uh, in the water. Um, but it has a really cool fade to the tip. It goes a little bit black towards the tip, so it just adds a really nice natural fade to the, uh, the silhouette of your fly. So I'm gonna bare just a little bit of that core and then tie that in right on top of the hook. And then I'm gonna take, got a weird red fiber going. I'm gonna take that brush, start folding it back just like I did with the red one. And this is just gonna finish off that fly. So we're gonna get one wrap. And this one, I don't count wraps to be completely honest. I'm not gonna tell you a number. Basically, however many you can fit until you get to the eye of the hook, put that many on. Um, just make sure while you're wrapping it that you're being very diligent in the way that you brush back those fibers so it makes the fly a little bit more robust in the water. But we're gonna brush it out in the end anyways. All right, I think I might even be able, yeah, I'm gonna squeeze one more in. So that was five or six turns of this stuff, so don't be shy. The nice thing about the EP fiber um, is that it is gonna be a synthetic, so it is gonna shed water naturally. Mind you, there is also Arctic Fox in this, which won't, but you'll be surprised at how easy this thing will cast. It's a nice, nice light bait fish imitation for the bay. I'm gonna fold that back and then I'm gonna go in and just 
give myself a head on that fly. This is also going to help to push back all of those fibers. And then I'll do a little whip finish too. Once. And twice. All good. Luckily, my thread I broke after the whip finish. Uh, so I just need to clean up a couple things, remove that brush, pull that out. Remove that thread, nice and easy. Uh, if you have not purchased a Loon Ergo comb yet, um, you're insane. If you're tying streamers, this thing is super efficient. It's like 20 different bobbins at the same time. So highly recommend. Um, I'm going to start picking out that fly. So just I'm actually going to go against the grain and just really make sure that I'm eating that thing up. Pulling all the fibers out all over the place so we make sure that we get nice coverage all over the fly. And now that I know that they're all loose, I can start to preen them back. And you'll notice that we're going to get a really, really beautiful silhouette already. All right. Uh, you could fish it at this point if you don't want to go the extra mile and put the eyes on, but uh, why would you? There's something great about putting eyes on your flies where they start off as just inanimate objects. Then you put a eye on it and it just comes to life. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on a whatever eye you like. This one happens to be a kind of off oval pupil um, with a little bit of red to accent that, uh, that really nice red through our gill plate. So I'm going to tilt over my fly on plane with the table and I'm going to take a little bit of super glue. And I'm just going to put a little dollop of that. Uh, I'm using the Zappagap gel right now. Um, I would really highly recommend using that product. Uh, the reason I like a gel as opposed to any other is that the gel tends to hold a little bit longer on that eye. Uh, at the end of this process, you're probably going to want to put some kind of epoxy over the head just to make it last super, super long and get that over the eye just to hold that in place. But the, uh, the Zappagap gel tends to hold, a, hold an eye in place really, really well. So I'm just pressing that into the fly, uh, making sure that it's nice and solid. And then I'll go ahead and I'll repeat that process on the other side. Uh, try and make the eyes as symmetrical as you can. Um, do fish care? Probably not. Do your friends? Yeah. Take that eye. Gonna go ahead and place that down. Look down the front of your fly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold that, uh, that eye in place, just like I did on the far side. And that's it. So this ragamuffin of a fly um, doesn't really look like much right now. But like I said, the fly got its name for a reason. It's called Look Better Wet. So I got a little cup of water here with the, uh, the other one that we tied up before. And I just want to show you guys how great of a taper that thing fills. Once that's wet, it just goes to that really nice teardrop. The, uh, the feather on the outside is nice and translucent, so you're getting a lot of that flash through. Uh, and that bucktail is just going to flare on all of those pauses that you make. Um, so 
If you need any of these materials, please come by Lost Coast Outfitters. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Uh, if you need any tips, feel free to ask. Um, signing off, Ben, happy fishing.